Here's a really basic movie playback patch. Toggle, QMetro, JIT.QT.Movie, and JIT.Window. Optimizing playback is a process of trying something, measuring performance, and then either keeping the new thing or not. Measuring performance usually means measuring how long jitter takes to process one frame. The longer it takes to process each frame, the lower the frame rate. Let's open this movie whose dimensions are 1280 by 720 and start playing. The JIT.FPS GUI object is quite useful for observing playback efficiency. We can connect it to the QMetro object, measuring bangs, and also to JIT.QT.Movie, measuring jitter matrices. The numbers are the same. Note that if we attach this toggle and message box to send the message unique one, we avoid duplicate frames. So the movie plays and outputs matrices at close to its native frame rate, in this case, 23.976. To see the effects of our experiments, let's send unique zero so that the jet.qt.movie output goes as fast as possible, including many duplicate frames. Let's click on jet.fps GUI to reveal a menu and choose MS. This displays the milliseconds required to process each frame. Click on it again, selecting DIM, and we see the dimensions of the matrix, in this case, the default. Now we'll put it back in the FPS mode. Here's a little patch to display the frame rate over time. Each matrix causes the button to send a bang to both inlets of a timer object, which measures the time in milliseconds between the bangs. If we divide this number into one second, that is into 1000 milliseconds, we'll get the frequency of the bangs. That's the frame rate. The trick now is to feed it into a multi-slider object, getting the inspector and changing its attributes so that slider style is line scroll, range is zero to 60, and in the patching rectangle, the third element is about 80. Now we can more easily track performance over time. See how unique one affects the frame rate? For our measuring purposes, we set it back to zero. Here's one more trick to track performance. On a Macintosh, open Applications, Utilities, Activity Monitor. Select Disk Activity and move the window so we can watch it while we work in Macs. A similar application is available in Windows. We'll add the attribute at adapt1, which resizes the jitter matrix to match the movie. Thus, we can see the effect of clip dimensions on performance. Open a 640 by 360 movie. Note the frame rate and the disk activity, which is displayed relative to a peak value. Now we open a 1280 by 720 version of the same movie, and the increased disk activity is indicated by the higher peak value and that results in a lower frame rate. Whenever Jitter needs to scale a movie to a different size, additional processing is required. By playing the movie's native dimensions, we avoid the performance hit of scaling in jit.qt.movie. Now we can't use the adapt attribute with jit.window, but let's set the size explicitly to match our movie using the attribute at size 1280.720. Let's move it to another display. That's a big improvement. Going full screen to a higher resolution reduces the frame rate again. So the ideal situation is to send to a display or projector whose dimensions are the same as the movies. Avoiding scaling will make your patches run faster. Despite this improvement, there's still a lot of disk activity. If your movies are small and your RAM big, you can load the entire video into RAM with the load RAM message. After a short burst, disk activity goes almost to zero. Loading the movie into RAM is also an efficient way to do random access. The at auto start zero attribute stops the default playback behavior. Now when we reload, the frames don't advance. We'll move QMetro's output to this random 2000 object which sends random numbers to the message box 
frame dollar sign one comma bang. This reads that frame number and outputs the matrix. There is another performance trick using Jitter's OpenGL objects, but that's a whole subject in itself. We'll cover that in the next video tutorial of this series, OpenGL Quick Start.